Well, good morning, everybody, uh, and welcome you to Hog Creek Systems Webinar Wednesday uh, for this week. We're going to be talking about SolidWorks uh, Composer Core Concepts and specifically talking about using 2D authoring elements to tell your story. So what we're referring to when we're talking about telling a story with Composer is the whole purpose of Composer is, is really to take 3D data and mesh it with 2D information to do detailing um, and that sort of thing, right? And telling a, a story, you can really only do that by using the 2D data. That is really how we, we accomplish that. And uh, again, telling a story is really just the, the detailing process, you know, whether it's, uh, it's an assembly instruction or uh, you know anything like that. Uh, the 2D that's going to make that. So just a little bit before we actually get into this here, uh, I'd mention that I uh, started this webinar here that this is a multi-part uh, series. Well, the, the title mentions that. So we actually had a few other parts to the series here where we talked about Composer. So there were, were two, uh, two blogs. Actually, there's three different parts here. Uh, part one, how to import an ECAD model. Uh, tips for creating uh, technical documentation, and then uh, see the other ones here. There's some blogs and some videos here. So if if you're really interested in other composer topics, just hit up our YouTube channel, and I'm gonna mention this near the end of the webinar again as well. Uh, but just just Google uh, YouTube Hot Rig Systems, and it'll take you to our to our, uh, our sorry our YouTube channel. And as well, if you go to hotrigsuccess.com slash blog, you'll be able to see all of our blogs. Okay, so let's uh, kind of lay out the, uh, the groundwork of what we're going to talk about today. So use, using 2D authoring elements to tell your story, we're going to go over six different main, main sub areas here. So we're really talking about a lot of simple things here. Uh, so we're going to kind of uh, dance over all these here. So we're going to talk about text and labels, uh, author circle and arrow, detail views. We're going to talk about the digger tool, polyline and paths, and then measurement. So this is all 2D data, of course. So for the most part, a lot of this is going to happen under the authoring tab and composer. So to start with text and labels. So let's go over this here. So I'm going to go over to composer. And I have a file that's already kind of uh, Kind of pre-started here. I've got this uh, this Archangel aircraft in here already. So this model is in here, and I already have kind of two two views to start with here. So let's start with the the first one, text labels. By the way, if you want to know how to get a uh, get a title block and a composer, you notice here I've got a title block on my background. Um, just look up our some of our other our, our YouTube videos on this. Uh, we do have some other ones where we've actually shown this. I uh, don't really have the time to uh, talk about that here, but uh, let's talk about these, the text and the 2D data. So under under author, I want to go over uh, 2D text and talk about labels here. So 2D text, again, uh, we've got the title block in the bottom here. What you can do with this is just put your text down, click into there, and then you can just just start typing. So I can type, uh, you know, into the into the text string here. I can type in. Uh, so I'm going to put this in the engineer field. So I'll put my name, John Slipic, and uh, let's just play around with some of the properties down here. So let's make this bigger. Let's put this down here so we can actually have that make a little bit more sense here. So I got the text down, but maybe I don't want. Uh, there's a shadow option. Turn the shadow off, and then turn the border off. So that's that's a, a very basic example of just straight up 2D text. And what you could do as well here, let me just see, if this is going to be part of your title block, you can actually freeze this down here. So I can go up top here and I can freeze that and now I can't even click on that. Whoops, I kind of moved my model there, that's okay. Uh, and that's why you notice that I can't click on my background either because it is frozen in place. Now when it's frozen, the only way you're going to be able to pick on it is if you go and find it under your collaborative actors. Now, uh, let's just update this view here. So that's the 2D text. I want to talk about labels next. So labels are, uh, are an associative, basically it's associative text that comes with a leader. It's what a label is. And if I hit label, 
I can actually pin down on a few things. So let's uh, let's get some info here. So first of all, I'm going to pin out the cockpit, say the nose cone, maybe one of the engines, and then we got these missiles under here. So let's let's do that. And what I want to do is actually go into these. And when it comes to a label, you want to go down to which area is it here? Under the actual text area of the properties, there is a text property. So go into that. And usually it's set to, to uh, actor tooltip to begin with. Put it up to string. And then you can put whatever you want here. So I can type in nose cone. Uh, let's capitalize that nose cone. And I'm going to do that for, for all these here. So these are going to be strings. And we'll worry about the styling in a second here. That'll be the cockpit. And then let's put the missile here. And then finally, the engine. Okay, so for the styling, typically what, what you could do here is you can just control select all of these and then play with all the styles that, or sorry, all of the, uh, the, apply the properties to all of them at the same time. So I usually like to start with the actual font size. So let's just put that up until it looks like it's a, a decent scale with respect to our model. And then from there, we can do uh, do a few other things. So maybe the color, let's change that color to uh, I know that one right there. And then let's just kind of move these over a bit. So that's really all there is to that. Uh, let me just update this view here. And you can see that this is associative. So these move with my view and they're actually relating to the actual geometry actor itself. Okay, uh, so let's go back to the PowerPoint here for a second. So we are we talk about text and labels. That's our very first one. So let's move on to the next one. The next uh, 2D authoring element is author circle and arrow. So let's create a, I'm just gonna create a brand new view right off the bat for this. I'm gonna move this into place and I'm gonna call this a circle, oops, circle arrow. Don't really need to do that, but uh, might as well have good practice here. So let's go into that view. And I'm not going to make use of all these here. So I'm going to actually hide. I'm going to hit H on the cockpit and H on the nose cone. I'm only going to keep the engine and the missile there. And let's update that. And let's talk about these uh, these circles and arrows. So the circle to begin with, uh, click on circle. It's essentially kind of like the extremity of a detail view. That's all it really is. It's going to draw attention and let you style it very nicely. Notice I've kind of got this bit of a gradient color going on with the edges, and I just click down, drag it out, and that is, that is my circle. Now, there is a really interesting way you can use that, though. If I hit circle, and depending on what I click on, this is the important part to note here, depending on what I click on, it's going to actually center that circle on that object. Now, I'm going to create a camera view here, and this is uh, camera views are useful if you're going to be doing some zooming in and out moving the model around to click on things. And uh, you'll see in a second here, I'm just going to create that camera view. That way we can return back to this position without messing anything up. I'm just going to zoom in because I want to make sure that I'm on this missile here. And I'm going to click right on that. And even though the missile didn't highlight, trust me, by clicking on it, this is going to change how this uh, it's going to affect the circle. Now, the way that it affects it, right now you can't really see anything, but if I click onto this and I go to the property to stay on top, it's actually going to go in the background. See that how only the missile itself is being circled, but then everything else is not. Now, if I were to make this bigger, you're going to see once I, I pass the extremity, it kind of kind of nicks through in the top here. So you got to uh, kind of move that down just a little bit. Now, one of the, I'm going to double click my camera see how our view zoomed out. That's why we do a camera view. Now I'm going to do one more circle. This one's going to go right on the engine. And let's style these a little bit. So let's, uh, let's just do one of them for now. I'll do the, yeah, I'll do the big one. Uh, so some of the styling uh, that we can use in the properties. I'm going to click and I change the color to yellow. And Let's play with the width a little bit. Uh, so that's the actual background width. I'm actually looking for the line width, so the actual outer edge. And you can see here, you've got uh, a number of things that you can use here to play around with this. 
Uh, what's another one? Cure the opacity. I like using that one a lot. Make sure it's nice and bright. And same thing with the top line here. Now, if I wanted to get this styling to go on all these properties, to go on to the other one here, the easiest way to do this is click on the thing that you want to change, and then go to your eyedropper tool under the properties. Hit your eyedropper, and then just click on the one that does have it. You know, so it copy, copies it all. So that's it's really the quickest way to do that. Now, let me update this view here. I'm going to put an arrow next. Now, the arrow tool, it's very simple to use. You just click once to define the starting point and click again to define the end. And that's really all there is to it. Now, uh, the the uh, to change the, the, the geometry of this, I can just click on the these little pointers that show up here. So I can either play around with those or I can go down into the actual properties. And those same properties are going to be in here. Uh, you know, I, things, things like color I can only change by going in there. Uh, let's pull that up a little bit. Now, one other interesting way that you can use these uh, these arrows is you can make these associative as well if you really want to. Now, to make them associative, you click on the arrow tool and you hold your Alt key down. Okay, you hold your Alt key, and you notice when I hold Alt, it wants to kind of walk on to things. So if I hold Alt and I click on the cockpit, for example, and I click and I put the arrow up, Okay, now first of all, let's make it go, whoops, let's undo that. I want to move that like so. Let's delete the other one here. Say I don't want that. Okay, let's make this, make this yellow. And I'm going to update that view. And what I want to show you here, this is associative. So this means that if I take the uh, take the cockpit itself and translate it, you notice how the arrow is going to follow with it. So you can actually use this if you're doing animation in between your different slides and you're showing uh, an assembly instruction, you can have an arrow on one slide uh, and say this position right here and say in, in the next position, we can restore that and create a new view. And then you basically have this little animation between the two views. Okay, so that is, uh, that is authoring using circles and arrow tool. Next on our list is doing detail views. So detail views, I'm gonna create uh, and create another view out of this. And I'm going to, I'm gonna hide, hide the arrow. Now I'm, I'm hiding them instead of deleting them for a very good reason. If I delete them, that actually deletes the arrow for the entire document. I just wanna hide it. And this is going to be detail. Okay, so to create a detail view, we use one of our workshops. And the workshop that we use is the technical illustration workshop. So what you do is you go under the technical illustration and it's actually this little checkbox right here for detail view. So kind of a hidden little thing. Now, when I do this, this is one of these spots. Let me delete, uh, delete that one view there. Uh, when you're using the, the detail tool, uh, detail view tool in the technical illustration workshop, I always recommend, because what you get is you get this circle that appears on the screen here. And what, what you might want to do is actually adjust this to fit. Now, what I recommend is you actually create a camera view. So you create a camera view and then just move the entire view. This is by far the easiest way to do this. And just move this in a little bit. And let's get right up. Try to match it a little bit to that's the other circle we created. So let's go like that. And then all you do here is uh, let's not. I'm not going to really bother with a lot of the settings here, but I will say that a lot of these uh, these settings are going to control the basically the uh, the line weight of the lines that appear in our technical illustration in the detail view. So I'm not going to worry about that, but I'm just going to hit create. And what that's going to do is that's going to create our illustration. I see it already appears up here in the top there. And you can see what I mean about the line weights. Uh, so there's a certain line weights that it uses for the outside and a certain ones that it uses for the inside and it's shading. But I'm not gonna worry about uh, playing around with this too much. Let's just go in, in here and let's talk about this missile. Now, one little tip about this detail view you can do here is if you actually click on an object, actually, let's not do that. Let's just hit the, whoops, 
I still have my translate tool on. Let's turn that off. If I click on the missile itself, actually let's let's zoom this out because we can see the extremities. If I click on the missile or any any geometric actor for that that matter, whatever you click on, if you go and you create your detail view with something selected, you see how that it only did the view with what I had selected. So that's that's essentially uh, how that works. Now, now that I've done that, I'm clear out of uh, the technical illustration workshop and what I, I need to do because my view is all messed up. So rather than you know zooming out with my mouse, I can double click on that camera view and then we're back where we were. So I just take these now and I put them wherever I need them. So let's click on that. I like to play around with these arrows a little bit, kind of give it a bit of a dramatic flair to those lines there. And then I typically delete camera views when I'm done with them. So let's delete that. And I'm going to update the detail view. And that is, uh, is that. So let's, uh, let's go back here and see where we're at. So we just talked about using detail views. You can see here in the, uh, again, the detail view in this preview, the lines are much thicker on the outside. So so just play around with those sometime, uh, get the desired effect. Now, the next tool we're gonna talk about is the digger tool. I'm gonna create a uh, create another camera, or sorry, another view out of that, and I'm gonna call this one, goes right at the bottom, so let's drag that up, and I'm gonna name that digger, just so I know where I'm at here. And what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to hide these these images. So I'm just going to click on them, hit H. H, by the way, those are just images, uh, what they are more or less. Uh, and those are accessible under collaboration, under panels. That's for all that, that shows up. Now for the, <clears throat> excuse me, for the digger tool, let's update my view here. And I'm going to create a, uh, no, I don't know if I need, need to create a camera. Uh, let's just go into the digger. The easiest way to go into the digger is to hit your space bar. Okay, you go in it from the space bar, and then what I do is to move it around, it starts off looking like a magnifying glass. And that might be what you think it's only used for, but that's really just the main mode that this is used for. If I move it off to the side here, what I want to do is I want to hit the wrench on the top. And this wrench is really going to expose everything that the digger can do. Now, to begin with, Let's just use it as a zoom tool. And I'm going to go to this, there's this plus cursor kind of icon here, and I'm just gonna left click drag. And that actually lets me change the center of attention. And I'm gonna drag that over to the engine that we've been talking about here. And what I can do from this point is is I can I can use this to either you know zoom in even further. I can actually crank that in and that will zoom in. And that's kind of the, the main way that this is used. And when I'm done with that, I hit this little picture at the bottom here, and that's gonna turn that into an image right then and there. So I can do that. Now, the, the way that this differs from the technical illustration image is that this is a raster image, whereas the technical illustration detail view was a vector image. So in a vector, no matter how, how close I zoom into this or how far I zoom out, it's always gonna look crisp and straight lines, whereas this is a raster image. It, If you zoom in far enough, you're gonna see every single pixel. Now, a few other things with the digger. Let's just move this up into the right here. A few things about this. So by default, we have the zoom mode here. Uh, the next the next mode that we have available is, a, is a basically a plane, it's a cutting plane. And what this does, if you see as, as I move the slider here, is it actually takes a plane that is normal to my actual view. So what I am looking at on the screen in front of me here, and it basically slides that down and just cuts everything. Excuse me. So that's how that one it that one works. Now the next one is oops, I accidentally zoomed in a bit. Uh, the next mode is actually uh, X-ray mode is what this, the next one is called. Now X-ray mode. Let's zoom all the way down. It's essentially, let's create a create a camera because I'm gonna want to zoom in a little bit here. Now what the X-ray tool does as I zoom in, it, it's kind of like if you imagine the, the cutting plane that we were using, zoom out of it, the cutting plane that we're using. And as we as we slide that cutting plane 
further, I bet I should zoom out to really show this a bit better. As as that slides inwards, you notice how that as that plane touches things, it kind of has this, this really cool ghosting effect that goes on. So it, it kind of does a silhouette on the first things that that plane touches. And the further that you slide the plane in, the more things, it actually makes them completely invisible once it gets to a certain point. And then when I keep going, that gets silhouetted and so on. So let's just go up until this point here and I'm gonna take a picture of that. Now one other thing that I can show you with the dagger. So the last one is onion skin. So we had x-ray and then onion skin. Onion skin is the same thing as x-ray except instead of doing that nice silhouette effect, it just completely removes things. So again, I uh, I like to give the analogy of the plane going into it. So when that plane touches things, rather than ghosting it, it just completely, completely removes it. So I hit, hit the image on that. And that's how that works. Now, the other thing about these, and, uh, and this is something about, it's just a statement about composer in general here. Let me zoom out and update this view is these images, of course, these can be used wherever you want in your whole document. Even though I'm, I'm creating them on this particular page here, I can show them anywhere I want. Now, the, the key, though, is, is you have to know, uh, let's say this image here. Okay, so let's click on that. Go to your collaboration tab, and you can see under panels, with that highlighted, that image 2D5 is showing up right there. So if I wanted this to show up, under uh let's go to this view 17 here okay if you wanted that image to show up there you go to collaboration and click on it there and now that's going to show up in this view as well and then you hit update so this is exactly why we do not delete things in our document here because if i delete this it actually deletes it out of my panels and therefore it will remove it from the whole document now even in even if the preview is an update, trust me, it'll it'll be deleted. So let's delete this camera and go back to uh, where we left off here. Let's go back to uh, see where we're at. So it was the digger tool that we were talking about here. Next on our agenda, polyline and paths. So this is a really fun one. So we're going to create something that's actually called there is associative paths and there is non-associative paths. Now let's, which one should we go from here? Uh, let's just go from this view 17. So I'll create a view, let's hide that. I'll create a view based off of this one. I'm gonna create view and this will be, I'll just call it paths. I can move that just behind the digger. Okay, so for these paths, let's hide the arrow as well. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Actually, let's hide these because we're not gonna not gonna be using that one in a second. Let's update that. Okay, so say the uh, say we wanted to make this just like in the image on the PowerPoint there. So we wanted to uh, show some of these these missiles dropping off of this thing here. Let's first of all create a camera view because I want to want to zoom in and actually look at these. And what I'm gonna do is click on so click on the actual missile, and then we're gonna go to transform. And I'm going to translate this. Okay, let's uh, restore our camera. And I'm basically just going to move this out, X them out. And then I'm going to go down. And let's do the same thing with one of the other ones here. It's going to move that, move that one a little bit further up. Okay. Update the view. Now, an associate, uh, a path is created under the author tab. And we do that by clicking on the geometric actor that I want to create a path from. And we just go to the pathing tool. Now under path, there is create associative path from neutral and there is create non-associative path from neutral. So let's start by creating the associative path from neutral. What that's going to do is it's going to take a line from the neutral. So, so the neutral for this missile is basically the origin that it came from. That's what it means when it's talking about uh, going back to the neutral. Now, it, this is literally a, uh, a vector on the fly here. Uh, and it's, it's basically going from point A to point B, even though I moved it along two different planes. Now, I'll get to how you change this in a second here. 
but let's uh, let's create a non-associative on this second missile here. Actually, no, let, let's play with this first. So to begin with, uh, let's click on the actual dash line here. So this polyline. And there is a certain amount of properties that are tied into these polylines. And I usually like to, I, I, like, I like to do these a certain way. So first of all, I like the color to be something other than black. Uh, something that stands out, you know, red or yellow, blue, something like that. And that's that's going to be very clear then. And then what I like to do as well is I like to crank that width up. Make sure that it's very clear that that's going from point A to point B. And if I want, I can change, you know, the uh, the dash line type. Um, I kind of like the one that, that's, uh, that's the default one on there. So I just stick with that. And one other thing that you can do that, that I, uh, might be important is the construction mode. So this is a property near the top in a construct mode. So right now it's on, on real path, which is a, uh, and as the crow flies, you know, from point A to point B. Uh, but if you go based on the world axis, that's going to show each, each movement more or less here. So it went along uh, direction A, you know, the X direction, let's say, and then it went down in the, the Y direction or whatever you're thinking of, of, of the axes in here, right? Now, the whole associative aspect of this, let's update the view. When it's, a, oh, one other thing, these endpoints here. Sometimes if you go right down to the bottom, there's a start extremity and an end extremity. A, a lot of times these might be, might have a point on by default and it'll actually put a point right on the end there. That's up to you if you want to put those on or not. Um, but you can actually adjust where those go. So I can take that and make that look like it's right on the end of the missile, for example. And let's update that again. Now I was uh, talking about the associative ability of this. So this was an associative path we created. Now to, to test that, I still have translate on here. Uh, let's click on my, my missile and let's just move that out this way. And you see how the path updates. So that's what's meant by, by the associative path. As I move this, the arrow of the path will follow it. Okay, now uh, to illustrate this again here, let's click on the other, other missile. And I'm going to create another path out of this here. So this time I'm going to create a non-associative path. All right. So again, this is going to be an as the crow flies. But if you remember what I showed you in uh, one of the previous slides, we can actually copy the properties. We go to the eyedropper tool. And I'm going to copy from the other arrow. And that pretty much has a style I want. And if I update this, if I go and I, I change this now, you see how that that error, uh, sorry, the, the polyline does not update with it. So that is the main difference between an associative and a non-associative path. Okay, so our fifth, uh, fifth item on the agenda was polyline and paths. Now we have one more item left, and that is talking about measurements. So you do have the ability to add measurements onto a view in Composer. We're going to talk about that. So for that one here, I actually have a, a view that kind of already has a, kind of a typical, uh, you know, a front and side view already in here. Now, just to save time, uh, this is already done in advance, but just to show you, if I rotate this around, all that was done here, uh, in order to get the two views in Composer, basically, if you go under assembly, you do a copy and paste of your original model. So I do a control C, control V, that's going to copy that entire thing. And now I have a third one. So then I can actually take this and I can translate this. And, and that's, that's really all that happens here. If I go to the copy, whoops, uh, go to the copy, I can translate that. And that's how you get the other ones. Now on top of that, uh, you also want to change the rendering style. So, so under the rendering style, uh, you want probably flat technical, you want the outline style to be construction edges. All that is set uh, when, when you do this. Now, to do your measurements, again, uh, because the, you know the, the theme of this webinar is talking about 2D authoring content, it is all under authoring. On the right side, you have your measurements right there. So there's some pretty basic ones. You have, uh, you know, lengths, uh, diameters, curve length, arc length. And depending on the complexity of your model, 
Um, in this case here, there's a lot of a lot of services and curves and that kind of thing. So in this case here, it's actually kind of tricky to to pick on certain things. So for uh, for example, uh, if I go to diameter and I hover around here, see it's going to pull a diameter based on that line that it picked there. But what's even more useful is if you go into the third one, you get a whole bunch of options right here. Okay, now before I go any further, I'm going to clean up my view here. I'm going to create a brand new camera view because I'm going to zoom in a bit. And what I want to do is click into that um, that third option here. And I can say, which one should we go with here? Uh, let's go distance between two lines, okay? And the neat thing about this is because we're in 3D, I can actually zoom, uh, move this around if I want. And let's say I want to go from this line over here to there. Okay, so it looks kind of funny the way it is right now because the lines are going off at a certain angle. But if I click down and I go on my camera, I'm actually getting the distance there that I kind of wanted. And just like with all of your other 2D content, you're going to want to go and uh, flesh this out a little bit. So if you click on that dimension, I can actually, where is this here? Uh, I can actually put the size up a bit. Okay, now because it's a measurement as well, you have a little area for measurement. So it says measurement slash uh, geometric dimension and tolerancing. You can change a few things down here if you want. I can turn the dimension off or on. I can have a pre symbol. I can put pre text in there. Uh, I can put post string. Uh, you know, if you've got a, uh, you know, it's tip or something like that, you can put that in there. So let's just do a few more here. Let's update, uh, update my measurements view here. Uh, let's go to the distance between two points. So this one is literally, I click on a point and it will measure between that. So not as uh, not as accurate as say the line tool, but nevertheless, I can put that there and let's pull out, uh, go on my counter view and I'm going to eye drop this. So let's eye drop that, we have our measurement and there we go. Okay, uh, so our last item on the list, uh, we just finished talking about measurements. Okay, so that's essentially everything that we had to talk about today. So just as a summary of everything that we went over using 2D authoring elements, tell your story. First, we talked about text and labels. You put a text in the title block, uh, put associative labels. Now remember those labels. Um, not only can you put your own text in there, but you can actually link them to properties that are coming off that geometry actor. So for for example, the cockpit, if you had uh, you know, a part name uh, called cockpit, you, you could pull that up. Uh, number two on the list, we talked about author circle and arrow. Uh, the arrow in particular, I'd mention, is particularly useful if you're creating assembly instructions and animations. You can actually have the arrow show uh, movement uh, between one slide to the next. Third on our list, we talked about uh, detail views. Now, a detail, the detail view is really a, a, core, a core element of Composer. Uh, between that and, and the digger, the two of these are, are kind of the main tools that you should really be using to flush out a lot of the details in your, in your design. Sorry, in, your, in, in the detailing of your design and telling your, uh, telling your story. Fifth on the list was we talked about polyline and path. These are really, really great. Uh, again, at showing an assembly instruction, you know, you can use this in conjunction with the arrow, for example. And that way, if you do an animation from one step to the next, that, that poly, the associative polyline in the path is going to follow it. So on one slide, you have it disassembled or assembled, depending on the direction you're going. And then on the next slide, you show it going uh, where you want it, and the path will actually animate. So very, very useful. And finally, if you need to pull off measurements, uh, you can do that under the authoring tab as well. Okay, so uh, before we, we close this off uh, for the day here, uh, just a few other things. I had mentioned, uh, uh, if you go to hawkreeksystems.com slash videos, you can see a bunch of our introductory webinars. Now, uh, on top of that, there is our YouTube channel. Again, I mentioned that the best way to, to find these is just Google Hawk Ridge, uh Systems YouTube, and you'll go right to our YouTube channel. 
we put out uh, stuff on our channel every single day. Uh, sorry, not every single day, but uh, every week. Uh, so it's it's pretty continuous. Uh, we also have blogs if you want to Google that. But uh, upcoming webinars. So we have a, a webinar on the 20th about Samelia Abacus. And then on the 27th, we have uh, tips, tricks, and fixes for common SolidWorks issues. So I encourage you to sign up. Uh, our webinars, of course, are free to attend. And uh, oops, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for attending.